Hello, friends. This is Dave Hurwitz, executive editor at ClassicsToday.com, here with, if I could choose only one work by Composer X, it would have to be work M. Well, Composer X is George Gershwin, and the number of works is not terribly large, but the choice, I think, is a pretty obvious one. It has to be Porgy and Bess, the great American opera. I don't know why there has always been this sort of, I don't know if you do the literature, but there's always been this, this sort of question out there. What is the great American opera? Why does there need to be a great American opera? It's sort of a hangover of the romantic nationalist trend um, in which, you know, every country is supposed to have its own operatic mythos, which is embodied in a group of works. And, you know, the latest country to do that I think maybe it only works in Europe because Europe has at least sort of countries with somewhat unified cultures, whereas America doesn't. But uh, the last country to do it in Europe, I think, was Finland, because in Finland, you've got you've got two operas called Juha, based on national topics. And then you've got then you've got The Last Temptations by Kokonen, and you've got a bunch of operas by Salonen. And so you've got like this school of national opera of which one can percolate to the surface. In Russia, it was Boris Godunov, you know, percolating to the surface, even though there was a school of national opera founded by Glinka and then sort of, you know, amplified by Bardin and Rimsky-Korsakov and Dargomishki and those people. And so, yeah, um, there's a school of national opera there. In Czechoslovakia, ah, oh, you have such a selection. You know, the national opera is Smetna's The Bartered Bride. If you like comic opera, and if you like serious opera, it's Janacek's Yenefa, also known as The Battered Bride, or The Battered Broad, depending on how you translate it. But, you know, these countries have them. Germany has a school of national opera that began essentially with Weber and Der Freischutz, and culminated in Wagner. Um, so that was their school, but they don't really have one national opera. Maybe it would be Freischutz. I mean, I would sort of pick that. France, oh, forget it. France is, 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 is such a cultural hodgepodge in that they borrow from everywhere, principally Italy, and then they call it French. So who knows what the French national opera is? I mean, my nomination would be Charpentier's Louise. But I don't know if anybody else would agree with that. Um, you know, it's it, they, they don't really have maybe Debussy's Paleos. Uh, who, who knows? It's impossible. Massenet, Gounod. I mean, there's just a huge, huge school of French opera. Yeah, but anybody could write one. You didn't really have to be French. And the topics are not terribly French. Meyerbeer is the Huguenots, except that Meyerbeer wasn't French. I mean, you know, it gets very complicated. Spain has Zarzuela. So they have their own tradition of music theater from which perhaps you could draw, you know, a school of national opera, pieces like La Verbenia de la Paloma, which is just fabulous, and, you know, things like that. But there is no other kind of general opera that represents Spain particularly. And Italy, of course, is opera. There's no way to pick one from Italy. I mean, if I had to, maybe Norma by Bellini, something like that. But they go back to the on of time. So so what are you going to say? And Norma is not about Italians. There's nothing nationalistic about it. You know, the story has to be something from, you know, the national soul or consciousness. Hence, after that whole long, you know, sort of disquisition. Oh, yeah, England. Yeah, Peter Grimes. Definitely. No question about it. And that's a modern one, too. From about the same time, incidentally, as Porgy and Bess. Porgy and Bess is such an obvious choice. And the only problem with recognizing the fact that Porgy and Bess is the American national opera and Gershwin's supreme masterpiece uh, stems from the fact that it is about, you know, black people, the African-American experience primarily, um, which, which made it not European enough for the snobby, horrifying classical music, you know, military industrial complex in this country. Um, and the fact that it was by Gershwin, who was by nature a, a musical theater guy and a populist. But so what? I mean, it's a magnificent opera, fabulous piece. And if only one work by Gershwin were to survive, 
you know, although some people would miss Rhapsody in Blue and, and you know, British Airways or American Airlines or one of those companies that uses the tunes, United, I keep forgetting which one it is, um, would have to do new commercials. Um, Porky and Bess would definitely be the piece because it has the best of him. It has the music theater. It's got the great tunes. It's got a terrific story, an absolutely wonderful story. And it is a really fabulously serious through composed work of music drama. Tremendous music drama. I mean, a real Gesamtkunst thing. And, you know, we could use a Gesamtkunst thing in this country, I think. And Gershwin wrote it. And it's about time everyone just admitted it and sucked up to it and enjoyed the result. So keep on listening, friends. Thank you for joining me. Take care.